Hey, my friends, welcome back. Me and Sweetie are here to talk to you today about creep and fatigue failures. You want to talk about it? Nope, she just wants to go on. <laughs> okay, so let's talk about creep and fatigue. Typically, you're not going to get any questions over this. This is going to be something that you just need to understand conceptually. So I want to talk to you about it, okay? These are two kind of failure modes that we see in uh, material science that don't come from just a pulling or applied force, okay? So what is creep? Creep is a time-dependent failure of materials continuously loaded below yield strength. You think, well, how can it fail if it's below yield strength, especially at elevated temperatures? This is the one of the things that I can kind of, I can make it kind of happen maybe in real time. This is children's putty. It's very silly, if you know what I mean, okay? And it has its own weight. If I hold it here long enough, right, it's, it's creeping right now. As I hold this, it's elongating. It's getting longer. Okay, I'm going to speed it up a little bit and pull on it, right? Now, let's get it a little bit longer. Okay, it's still, it has now, um, it's just under its own weight, it's starting to, to elongate. Okay, and when it gets down to a certain point, It'll elongate more and more and more. Now it's moving on its own without any other applied force. It's getting longer and longer. <laughs> it eventually is going to fail, isn't it? Okay, that's creep. Something that's just moving under its own weight from continuous load. Now you don't make many things out of silly putty, okay? Thankfully. But we do think, see things like glass. Glass, as it's, as it's uh, continual, continuously held in one place over time, will start to sag. It's actually moving. It's like a liquid, actually. Um, but you can see that under things like, um, especially like in boilers or things where things you get an elevated temperature and it's under continuous load, it will eventually grow enough that it will uh, cause a failure, a leak or a crack or something like that could happen. So that's creep, a time-dependent property materials that allow it to fail over long, long periods of time. Now, this is a long period of time. Like a boiler might fail after like 100,000 hours of, uh, of heat, heat cycles, heat loads. And so, um, you know, that's a long, long time. But 20, 30 years, maybe we can have a failure from creep. The second one is that you may be more familiar with, familiar with is fatigue, okay? So fatigue is the, the cyclical loading of members. One of the things that I see here all the time, especially in West Texas when the wind blows, is this. Okay, Notice how the, the traffic lights out here, when the wind starts blowing, the traffic lights start oscillating. And where those traffic lights are connected to the ground, those bolts are going under a load like tension compression, tension compression, tension compression, as that beam cycles up and down. So on the downward, it's in tension. On the upward, it's in compression. So that loaded member is just being compressed and stretched, compressed and stretched, compressed and stretched. Now we know what happens on these things. Some things that we might see. Okay, number one, here's just a, a, a little pop can here, right? A little soda can. And it's got the old pop top on it. Okay, now fatigue failure. How many times can I load this and unload it and load it and unload it and load it and unload it and load it and unload it before I have a failure, okay? And that's something we're very, very familiar with. Things that we don't like. Some of my people would told me that y'all wouldn't know what this is, but I think you all know what this is, right? This is the little clip on the end of your ethernet cable here, right? How many of you have one of these where you hook this on the carpet and you've pulled that back and you pull it back and a couple of times and that little plastic tab there breaks off. That's fatigue loading, right? But then we have other plastic materials like this little uh, cream bottle here. It has what's called a living hinge on it, okay? And it has a little plastic connected hinge on it right here. But I can fold that back, forth, back, forth. I can fold that for hundreds and thousands of cycles and it will not fail. It's designed to do that. It's called a living hinge. Now, it might fail after a long, long time. But what we have here is something called an SN diagram for materials. Okay. And what is the SN diagram? S stands for stress. N stands for 
number of cycles. So steel, if I stress it below 40, right, if anything below 27, if I, even if I load it and unload it, an infinite number of cycles, okay? Now this, this cycle, the, the, the column down here, or the, the uh, axis down here for cycles is logarithmic, okay? So this is the number of times something is loaded and unloaded, loaded and unloaded. And what this line here shows is that steel, when it gets down to 27 KSI, at down here you can load it and unload it for an infinite number of cycles. It will never, ever fail. Now, we haven't so far been able to test to infinity, but we've done a lot of cycles and it hasn't failed. Aluminum, on the other hand, right, it fails. You can, and you can predict at 1,000 cycles at 30 KSI or 27 KSI, about somewhere in there, Aluminum should fail, right? At 40, it may only take 10 cycles to fail it. But if I come out here, anything below 19 KSI, aluminum will last forever as long as it's not loaded, even if it is cyclically loaded and unloaded, okay? So that's what an SN diagram is, and that's how to read them, okay? So the number of cycles, this is the number of cycles here that it takes that it can be loaded and unloaded, as far as we know, to infinity without a failure, okay? So those are two kinds of failure modes that you kind of need to understand and know about. I don't know that you would get a problem on these necessarily, but at least you know what an SN diagram is, what it means, you know what creep means, and you know that those are two failure me mechanisms that you could see as an engineer, as a material designer. Hope this helps, and I'll see you on the next video.